Just a quick Unity tutorial today, we're going to make an infinitely scrollable background. So for this, we're going to need an image. I'm going to bring this little grid here in, and we're going to set it to default. I'm going to apply. Really important thing right here is this wrap mode. We're going to pick repeat and hit apply. And we'll see what that is in just a moment. I'm going to create in the hierarchy, 3D object plane. I'm going to change the name to be background. And we're going to make its position 0, 0, 0 with a rotation of negative 90. And if I go back to 2D view, there it is right there. And it's not lit up right now, so we're going to add in a light, directional light. And this is kind of facing off to the side by putting all of the rotations to zero. And I'm just going to push it off to the side so we can see it. The light is now facing the same way the plane is. And I'm going to go back to 2D. Now we want to put the texture on here. Just drag and drop. And this is where the important part is. It makes this material. And a material, because we set it to wrap mode, we can take the offset and move it left, and it wraps around to the left. We can move it right, wraps around to the right. And you see the numbers here are going up as high as we like them to. So we can really make this thing go pretty much infinitely in either direction. There is going to be, of course, a limit depending on uh, when we reach the largest number possible on the machine for whatever type this is, whether that is a double or a long or what have it. So we're going to set that offset inside of a script. We're going to come over here and first we'll create the player before we create the script. So the player is just going to be a sprite and I'm going to pick a knob and I'm going to make it red like that. And we see it right there. If we don't see it, it might be Z fighting with the plane here. We see that it made the circle all the way up here at negative four. If I put all these at zero, 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 we see that it's there, but as I move the screen, it kind of blinks in and out. So I'm going to take the background here and I'm going to push it back or forward because away from the camera is positive numbers. So we want to do point 0.1. There we go. Now it is this very small distance away from it. All right, so now we have the player. I'm going to rename from new sprite to player. Perfect. And just to keep it really simple, I'm going to make it so that way the camera just follows the player and the background also follows the player. To do that, I'm just going to make both of them children of the player. So we have camera and the background. So now let's actually create the C sharp script for the background. So I'm going to do infinite background. And we'll reload. And as we saw there, there's a little preview because I had the code up already. But we're going to get started with brand new. So first, we're going to need to move the player around. We're going to use a 2D rigid body for that. So let's add one. Let's do, I'm going to do public just so we could set it all the inspector. I'm going to also show how to do it inside of the script here. So we do public rigid body 2D RB for rigid body. We can name that last one anything. It's just a variable name. We also want a float for the speed. That's a number with a decimal. We need a renderer, which is going to help us with the um, background where we're going to be taking that and moving that offset number. And we're just going to call that rend. And the last thing we're going to need is the background object. This is going to help out if we made it private for not setting it in the inspector, but letting the code handle it. So we need the game object, and I'm just going to call it BG for background. And inside of here, if we had made the rigid body and the rend private, we would set it this way. We would do RB is equal to get component rigid body 2D. Semicolon there. And then the rend, we would want to set equal to the background dot get component. And we want to get the renderer same type, just like that. Cool. So now the next part is we want to go into update. And this is going to be where we actually move the player. And while we move the player, we're going to be moving the background. So let's get some input from the player. Let's get the horizontal. New vector two. We want horizontal and vertical. I am actually skipping a step. We want to get input axis. And this is where we're going to be doing the input from the player. We're going to get the float horizontal. And it's going to be the input.getAxis. 
horizontal. Semicolon to end it. We're also going to get the vertical from the player. And now that we have those, we're going to use those to set the rigid body stop velocity. Equal to, we're going to make a new vector 2 for this. Since we need the x and y, we're going to use horizontal and the vertical. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. But this is for moving the player. We'll add a comment. And this will be for scrolling background. All right, so for this we need to do rend dot material dot main texture offset. And we're going to set that equal to a new vector 2. And inside of here that's going to be rend dot material dot main texture offset dot x. So that's going to be getting its current value and we're going to subtract the horizontal value from our input. So if we move to the right, this is going to move left. If we move to the left, it's going to move right. So it's going the opposite of where we are. We're going to smooth it out by multiplying it by time, not delta time. And now, that's only for the x, so I'm going to do a comma, I'm going to enter so we can go down to the next line so it stays shorter, so we're not going off screen with it. We also need the y value, so rend.material.maintexture.offset.y minus vertical times time dot delta time. And semicolon just like that. So we also made that speed value. So up here next to the vector two, we're gonna multiply that by speed. I completely typed that wrong, there we go. And multiply that by time, that's all the time. So that way it's frame rate independent.